Welcome to Off Over 50 and Fired Up. And now what? With Linda and Shelly. Last episode, we talked about being thrifty. Remember, Shelly, we reviewed 10 tips on how to stay thrifty as you search for a job or starting a business or changing your career. Sometimes it's going to take a while, so you have to make the most of the income that you have in order to be successful. But before we get started on our topic of changing careers, Shelly, what's your wine recommendation for this episode? I have a nice Cabernet. It's called Courtney Benham. It's a handcrafted vintage from Napa Valley. Is there anything you can tell us about the actual wine itself, or is it just drink it, it tastes good? Nope. Just drink the freaking wine. It is good. (laughs) All right. So cheers. Cheers. All right, then. Let's get on with the show and start with our handoff discussion on making a career change. Shell, did you know that only 14% of U.S. workers think they have the perfect job? I'm not surprised at that number. That's actually from a 2013 Harris Poll, so I bet it's even worse today. Probably. And what what do you think people are thinking in their heads when they answer that question, perfect job? I don't know. I mean, it's probably a combination of, you know, my my responsibilities. I really like my role and what I'm doing. It also could be thinking of things about, you know, the culture and my boss and my relationship with him, so... I think it's probably a combination, and they probably weigh the two things together or three things together. What do you think? Right. I, I think you're right. I, I think it is it is kind of looking at, do I like actually the work, the function, the things that I'm doing, it, you know, whether it be in finance or marketing or, you know, whether you're digging ditches, you know, do I actually physically like that work? If you like the work, then the question is, Am I okay with the environment I'm doing the work in and how the work is getting done, whether it's in a corporation or out on my own or small business, large business? I think that's, that's the question. You've got to answer both those questions. Yes, yeah, there's going to be a whole bunch of different components that, that get baked into that, that decision. Right. And then, you know, interesting enough, um, in that same poll, it said that 57% of the people didn't switch careers because they thought they had a financial security barrier, that they just didn't feel confident enough that they could do the change because they didn't have the right financial situation. Yeah, and again, that's, you know, money is, is scary. If you, if you don't want to take the risk of not having income coming in, you know, you might not want to make that career change. You might stick it out where you're not completely happy. And then again, one of the interesting things is that 40% of the people said that if they were going to change careers, they didn't know that they'd change it too. They had no clue. Like, I know I don't like what I'm doing right now, but what am I going to go to? I have no idea. And then 37% who kind of knew what they might want to do, they didn't think they were qualified to make the change. Well, Linda... We had 0% qualifications, right? When we started the podcasting, we had no freaking clue what we were doing. We had none. We Googled We had nothing. We had nothing. We relied on each other's talents and we brought in people who knew who that could help us. Yeah. But again, you know, we wanted to take the leap. Exactly. We used Google quite a bit on this one. Love Google. (laughs) Love Google. (laughs) They helped us quite a bit. Linda, you're the Google queen, I think. Uh, Yeah. Well, I, well, that's, that's right. And you know, Especially on the technology front, that's something I kind of like to do. So we really didn't know a lot about like, what do you do for a podcast? How technically does it work? You know, how do you set up a domain, a website? How do you record these things? But thank God we actually had friends and people who we knew who actually had those expertise. You know, we had people who were videographers, who were um, directors and editors, and we had people who could do graphics and things like that to help us out. So what does that mean, Shelly? Leverage your network. Network. Whether you like it or not, yes. you have to do it. That's right. You know, and you're right, Lynn. And, and one of the other things is people were fretting over whether they're going to make that decision, on, you know, in terms of being able to make a career change or whatever. We were lucky because the decision was made for us, whether we liked it or not, right? We right. were done. We were severed out, unfortunately. So we really had to just figure out what we were going to do next. And we didn't have to deal with that at, at first anyway, with that whole idea of that financial insecurity. We had a little bit of time. We had a little bit of breathing room because we were compensated for a period of time based upon how long we were at, at, the, uh, at the company. So that took a little burden away, right? It mm-hmm. allowed us, I think, to at least at the beginning think a little more creatively, kind of think about what we really wanted to do. Well, yeah, it was really nice to know that I could pay my mortgage for the next three or four or five months or whatever it happened to be, you know, that me and my cats were going to be able to stay in my house for a little while. 
I like that. That helped. The other thing, though, that is different, especially for us who are over 50, we know we have some listeners who are under the age of 50, but for those who are more towards the end of their career changes or, you know, you have a lot of experience, it is different making career changes in your midlife um, than earlier in career. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You got a lot more responsibility, right? And yep. sometimes you're at your peak earning power, right? That's right? So you're at your higher incomes and you're like, oh my God. How do I make that trade off? It's scary. How do I give that up? You know, and it's really, it's tough to start over. So, it, you know, from some of the things I think it's, it's important that, you, you know, you really start to understand why you want to make that career change, you know, and what, what's, why, what are you really dissatisfied? Are you dissatisfied with your actual job and the functions? Is it the boss? Is it the culture? And you really need to assess what are your true interests and, you know, where your talents might lay you know, if you want to make that career change. So. Right. So when you're looking at a career change, the interesting part is, you know, we did a little research and we actually found a, a couple of things about what to consider when you're doing a career change. But what was interesting to me, a lot of the points that were in there married up very well with our season one branding series that we did. A lot of the things that you do to kind of understand what your brand is actually is part of looking at career change. Mm-hmm. It all links up. It all links up. Mm-hmm. So we recommend that people go back and kind of look at our, our branding series, which is episode 7 through 14. That was a big series. Yes, it was. There was a lot there, though. So the article that we found was by Laura Williams, and she's an educator and a writer for a lot of online channels. And she actually came up, I think, with some really nice little, you know, nine steps on how to prepare for a career change. Uh, so, Shelley, uh, what's the first thing that uh, that Laura had to say about career change that you should consider? Uh, the very first thing she talks about is getting tested, right? So, and what, what kind are, of tested? <laughs> well, we're talking about like an aptitude test <laughs> oh, or oh. a personality test. Okay, you know, no blood test, no blood test. <clears throat> And these can be actually found online for free, which is pretty cool. And we also had it in our episode nine on branding and understanding the perception where we actually talked about the personality test, the fascination personality test that we ran. And you can actually find it also online. It's called howtofascinate.com by Sally Hogshead. The cool thing is when we first did it, you know, we talked about the fact that, you know, Linda has, she's very powerful. And a lot of times, you know, she can be a little scary when she gets so powerful. Uh, but again, you know, you can find all this stuff in our off t- toolkit as well on our website, Over 50 and Fired Up. Right. And remember, Shelly, you were a little more shy, reserved, you had that mystique. No one really knew what was going on in your head. I had that little poker face. Yes. The Even poker though my face. body language doesn't always, <laughs> always lie. No. <laughs> no I'm not good language. at hiding that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that, it, that's not well hidden sometimes. No. So for step two, uh, it's all about analyzing your strengths. And then step three understanding how if how you're going to um, transfer those strengths into your new career change or if you have gaps and how are you going to fill those gaps and interesting enough in episode eight we had the branding uh in our branding series we had the personal reflection where we talked about how the fuck uh do you go about doing it and we had our um, our friend Betsy who talked about what helped her to actually get through that process and analyzing her strengths and determining those needs for her life that she wanted. And she actually talked about two books, Design the Life You Love by Elise Brussel and The Life by Design by Miranda Hersey. Did I say Hersey right this time? You did. I used to say Hershey, the candy bar. Yeah, that's because we all love chocolate. Right. So check out episode eight for that. And uh, those two books are great. And Betsy does a great job of taking you step by step through through those books um, and what you can do. What's the next one? What's number four? Well, what I really like when you talked about the, you know, determining your needs, right? And I, the thing you have to do is once you understand those needs, you got to look at how do I, you know, how do I look into education and training? What are the things that I'm going to do that are really going to help me move forward in making this career change? So once you kind of understand uh, that portion of it, then kind of lay out all of your options. Well, how do you really want to go about this career change? Do you want to strike out on your own? Do you want to create a partnership with someone else? Do you want to go back into the corporate arena? Do you want to do something in a smaller upstart? Kind of what, what is it that you want to do and how do you want to do it? And we found that there's a great site called careerprofiles.info that can really help you lay all that out and help you understand uh, what your options may be. 
So the one thing is when we started up our podcasting and our consulting, maybe we can talk about what we learned and how we went about it. Shelly, yeah. what, what do you think like when we first started talking about doing some of these kind of new career change yeah. areas? I think there was, a for me, and I think for both of us, there was a lot of, you know, mixed emotions about it. It was very exciting, but very scary all at the same time. It's like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm freaking doing. You know, we want to do a podcast. What do you know? Zero, 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 zero. But, you know, we thought, what, what do we have to lose? I mean, we were fortunate enough we had some money, you know, set aside because of our little bit of compensation, uh, you know, but it was just, uh, just that you were... St- Excited and nervous all at the same time. Yeah, and I think I think it gets down to our personalities too because you were a little bit more nervous than I was. I immediately just got on Google and tried to figure it all out. You know, I called our, you know, who's our producer now, Itzik, and just said, hey, how can you help us? And I immediately like went digging in and said, oh, how can we do this? You know, what what's the software? How do you get it done? How do you create a domain? I just got all excited about the newness and, you know, all the things, especially the techie things. I just love that. Yeah, and you also had more money coming in than me. <laughs> no, so. it's because I worked longer at the company. I know, but you know, that all helps. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It does. Right. It relieved me a little bit more. I could mm-hmm. focus on and kind of target something new. You're right. Yeah. right. Every once in a while, I got a little crazy. Security. I couldn't help it. You did get a little crazy. <laughs> so number six uh, that Laura talks about is creating a new resume and really spending that time to really look at a well-thought-out resume. And we actually spent a lot of time on episode 10 talking about how to do that and how to look at what a good resume looks like. And we had our friend Susie who talked about her experience in updating her resume and really talked about the pitfalls that you may encounter uh, because it is different these days on how to structure a resume, especially when you're dealing with all these online sites uh, that you have to put your resume into. Yeah, and all the algorithms and everything that are out there, it's just so annoying. It is. So you're right. And then number seven, and one of the things that I hate to do, but (laughs) it's a necessary evil, is you have to start really engaging in professional, you know, networks, right? You know, you have to you know, just really reach out to people that can help you like we did when we first kicked off our podcast. Right. And we had a lot, we had a whole whole series on networking that we did that Mm -hmm. people could, could look towards. And then also we did a series on interviewing and that's number eight is really trying to look at, can you set up some informal interviews with either people who can help you get connected or with companies that you want to target either to work for or to work with? And we did a lot, a whole series on on season two, as I was saying, it was episodes 25 to 29, talking about how to prepare for and how to conduct good interviews and then how to follow up on them. But you really do want to be strategic, especially if you're going to start a a career change in getting those connections with those people who can help you make that career change. Yeah, and have lots of conversations. You know, like you said, those uh, informational interviews and stuff, it's just it helps. And it's just like having coffee with somebody and just saying, hey, you want to have a coffee with me? Hey, I'll take you to lunch. You know, but just getting engaging in those conversations with people so that they know you're interested in a career change. Mm-hmm. And number nine is use career change resources, right? So Linda mentioned earlier the site, you know, www.careerprofiles.info. There's also two really cool books that we wanted to recommend, and I love their titles, especially Life's a Bitch and Then You Change Careers, and that's by Andrea Kay. And the second one is, I don't know what I want, but I know it's not this. And that's by Julie Jensen. So also, Shelley, don't forget that we, to have our listeners check out our podcast that focused on personal reflection, branding, resumes, and interview. And that's all season one and two. Yes, those episodes can really help everyone that when you're really looking into making a career change. So that's a wrap on our nine nifty notes to consider when making a career change. Oh, you're so funny, you Lynn. Like Come on. I'm rubbing off on you, man. You are. And I'm not sure it's a good thing, but yes, <laughs> you are rubbing off on me. So as always, you can find our nine tips for a career change and all the other reference materials from our podcast on our, in our off toolkit on our website, www.over50andfiredup.com. Remember our new name change, Fired Up. And don't forget, you can also get our wine recommendations too. So please give us your feedback and stories by going on our website and clicking on contact us or emailing us at offnowwhat at gmail.com or commenting on our Twitter or LinkedIn sites. And remember to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. That's right. So thanks thanks for for listening. listening. Bye. Bye.